Hi, I'm Stefan, the BMW DIY guy, and do you want to add quick jacks to the tools in your garage? I'll show you how. All right, guys, so let's talk about this a little bit before we get going here. And I love quick jacks, and I've done a whole series of videos for them over time. And I have their latest 6000 ELX set here for my home garage. Now, I have a very diverse set of cars that can come in and out of my garage at different sizes. And I want to stress how important it is that you measure the lift points on your car before you buy the correct set of quick jacks for you and your garage. But this is one of those tools that once you have it, you, you'll wonder how you ever lived without it. Maybe you don't have time or space to have a full lift in your garage, and you can add these rails, these quick jack rails, that will give you the equivalent of a hydraulic lift in your car and make it so much easier, faster, and safer to work underneath your car. I highly recommend them, and I really wanted to get a set, set of the new 6000 ELXs to fit all of the needs of all of the cars that are coming in and out of my garage. Now, when they first show up, they come up in a big box. <laughs> I've already unboxed them, gotten them all taken out and broken out and ready to show you how to set them up. I want to walk you through that process and why you want to add this really important tool to your garage. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got. All right, also here's the rails all broken out now. <laughs> you know, it's funny when I look at the camera, these don't look that big, but these are the biggest that Quick Jacks makes. Each rail is 120 pounds each, so they're not light. But they're definitely maneuverable. They have wheels on either end, which you can kind of see it he here which makes them a little bit easier to roll around. Now, in addition, they come with these handles that you can use to get a hold of the rails themselves when they're underneath the car to help you pull or push them back out from underneath the car. Now, everything is unboxed and ready to go. So you can see all of our hoses, we're gonna be adding the fittings. So we've got our fittings here, they're gonna to go to our hoses. We've got the fittings that are gonna go on our pump. And we've got the hoses, these longer hoses, and our, and our elbow connections that are gonna be going onto the quick jacks themselves. Then we're going to be setting them up. We're gonna be adding hydraulic fluid over to the pump and we're gonna be priming the system and walking through that whole process. In addition, they do uh, include some Loctite uh, liquid, which is really, really nice. Now, when you look at the manual, you can use like Loctite uh, thread, thread tape if you'd like or potentially use both. Now, I've got no plans to use my quick jacks for the next few days, so dry time on their liquid, I'm actually gonna use their provided liquid, um, and I'll walk you through that whole process. But here's basically our breakout. Now, the one other thing you're gonna wanna get, and we'll uh, cover it when we get there, but we're also gonna need to be adding hydraulic fluid uh, to the reservoir of the pump itself, so we can walk through this whole process and get the, get the hoses primed and the pumps primed and everything else. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna get started on connecting our hoses first. All right, so as we go through the setup, anything that's that's duplicated, I'm only gonna do once, right? So as we do the, the, the setup here on one set of the rails, I'm just gonna show that on one set of the hoses and so on, because it's just gonna be the same as we go through, and there's no reason to duplicate. So one of the very first things you want to do is you want to take out the plug on the cylinder. This is a six millimeter Allen just to back this plug out. And then you're going to take the elbow plug that we have here. Now this angled plug, you can take, go ahead and take one side off and then just thread it into place. Now notice I didn't use any thread lock or any thread tape on this. And actually there, the guide says not to on either end of this particular plug. Now the other thing to keep in mind as we go around here, we tighten this up. You want to, you want to have this at, at a little bit of, a, of an angle, and I call it about a 45 degree angle. Straight up and down is bad, straight flat is bad. About halfway in between, you can get it to right there. And this is an 18 millimeter wrench that you're just gonna take and snug down this bolt, which is still very, really loose. So I'm just gonna do it by hand for a second. Okay, and go ahead and snug it down, and I'm gonna hold the other end so it stays at the right angle that I want to have it on. And you don't need to go, oh, overly tight on this, just snug it down nicely like that. Okay, good to go there. Now, uh, we're gonna move on from here. I wanna show you the hoses next and the rest of the pieces, but go ahead and get these on first. And I always leave these caps on um, until I add the other ends. All right, so now that we've got our elbow prepped, go ahead and grab one of your connectors. And this is the female to male connector right here that you can see. And this is going to be going on to one end of the hose here. And then the female end of your shorter hose will go on your connection, on your elbow. Now keep in mind, the elbow doesn't, doesn't take any thread lock. This is a 17 millimeter fitting. So you can just thread this all into, into place really nicely. This will also give you an opportunity you'll see how your hose can potentially stand up a little bit. And again, you don't want it standing up too far where it'll come up and potentially get pressure while you're lifting a car. 
So if you have to loosen this fitting a little bit, tip it down a little and then tighten it back down so that's good to go. Now on this end, you're gonna very quickly learn the trick. So let's go ahead and take a little bit of, of their liquid thread lock. Now you wanna be one or two threads back from, from the end. Now, really quickly, now they provide the thread lock. I don't see any reason not to use it, but let's talk about thread tape here really quickly if you decide to use it, which I've done before on quick jacks. You always wanna wrap clockwise and come back. Don't have it overhanging the, in the, the mouth of the fitting at all because that thread tape can come off and get into the pump. You wanna be a couple of threads back from the opening and wrap clockwise. So that's when it screws in, it'll, it'll tighten into the threads rather than spin out. So always go clockwise. Now that said, I don't see any reason not to use their, their liquid thread lock. You start a couple of threads back and you don't need a lot. This stuff's pretty thick as I get it primed here a little bit better. Just put a little bit on the first four or five threads, just like that, and a couple of threads back again from the opening. Now, when you thread this into place, it's only gonna go so far by hand as you can see. But what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna have to counter turn. So let me grab. So this is a 22 millimeter wrench. You're gonna put 22 on this side, like this, and we're gonna put <clears throat> the 17 on this side and we're gonna have to counter turn. So you're gonna hold one while you turn the other and that's hard to do in the position I'm sitting in right now. But as you can see, I can hold one while, while turning the other. So make sure that you, you get a good grip on one side. Let's see if I can do this on camera here really quick. So we'll get this set like that. And I'm kind of doing this the wrong grip. It would be easier if it was facing me, but as you can see, I hold, hold one side and as I tighten the other. Now, this doesn't have to be super, super tight. It's really just a snug again, which should be about enough right there, actually. That's good and tight, okay? So, go ahead and connect this end here to the elbow using your 17 millimeter. And again, tighten it down until snug. And you're gonna feed the hose back through the other end underneath the gap, just like that, which is off camera right now, I know. But I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. But the setup on this is really easy. And I wanted to make sure to show this step to make sure about adjusting the angle here. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit high. There's a little bit where it sticks up. Now, granted, the lift is gonna have the blocks on it to give me a little bit of additional height, but I'm not sure I wanna, ha I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not too high with the hose. So we're gonna take, excuse me, we're gonna take my 18. I'm gonna loosen this again a little bit. I'm gonna turn this down just a smidge. We're almost closer to flat right now. Really close to having that elbow be flat to the plane of the lift. And then we just tighten back up, just like that. There we go. That's gonna make me feel a little bit more comfortable as I use it. And then I can take my 17 and just tighten this side down. Okay, so now if you haven't done the other side yet, because I usually will do this in pairs. So as I do one side, I'm most familiar with the instructions and then I'll go ahead and do the other side as we get that tightened down just like that. Good, okay. So that's all set. If you haven't done the other side yet, go ahead and go do that and then we're gonna move on. Okay, so now that you've kind of practiced that double wrench technique, we're gonna be doing it again on our, our longer hydraulic hoses. You're gonna see when you pull the caps off and you've got your, your four uh, female to female connectors right here, you're gonna be doing the exact same thing. Now you're gonna to wanna to use a little bit of thread lock on these. And again, we're gonna use that just a couple of, you know, one or two threads back from the opening. And we're just gonna, you just, a little bit goes a long way. So that's just a really small drop, honestly. Now again, quick reminder, don't use your hoses until you give these 24 hours of dry time. You can hand screw these into place when you get them set. And then you're gonna counter turn with the 17 on this side and your 22 on this side. So you can hold with the 17 and turn with the 22 kind of like this as I try to do this kind of one-handed right now just for you just to get the idea. So I get that set. Then I'm gonna counter turn with the 22, just like that. Okay, so go ahead and put your female to female ends on both of your main hoses. And then we're gonna move over and we're gonna add our connectors uh, to the pump unit. All right, two more fittings to go. So you want to go ahead and take out these little uh, plastic plugs on both of these. And again, keep in mind on anything that's got a gasket in it, you don't use thread lock. So we're not gonna use any of the liquid or pipe tape on this. 
I always put the bottom one in first because that makes it a heck of a lot easier. I also find the covers tend to get in the way a little bit. So you're gonna wanna just hand thread these into place. Bottom one, then top one. Now what, what, you, are, what you will notice is you do this as this tightens down, is that you can give it about a half turn just to tighten it the rest. It's about a half turn, okay? And then you can always put your cover back on. Now these covers, I really do like these covers. I try to use them as much as possible and I'm really careful with them. You wanna protect these fittings. Uh, as you work with it, I mean, you're in a dirty environment here in your garage, dirty, dusty, whatever it happens to be. And the last thing you want to do is ruin some of these fittings. Now, the good news is since all these fittings come off, I had a fitting fail once on the very first set of quick jacks I had, and it was very easy to just order a new one and replace it. And it was on one of the hoses. So there we go. That's about tight. Okay, so that's that. But that is the one nice thing about these fittings is that they really are quick and easy to replace. Okay, so now go ahead and refer to the manual for hydraulic fluid. It's, it's ATF, automatic transmission fluid. It's hydraulic fluid. There's, there's a bunch of different descriptions on the different types that you can get to, to fill up your, your reservoir. But that is the next step. So go ahead and just pull your plug off and go ahead and fill your reservoir. Um, I believe that it should be about a half inch below the top when it's full. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, make sure that you have enough left over um, of your hydraulic fluid that as we charge the system, you know, we charge all the hoses and we're gonna charge the cylinders, this, this reservoir is going to go down and we may have to add to it just a little bit, okay? But go ahead and add, go ahead and add your transmission fluid now. All right, so one of the last things we wanna do before we get it all hooked up to bleed the system is we wanna charge the air cylinders. And these are little boost cylinders that help provide pressure to the system when it's all the way down on the ground. Without these, it would be very difficult for a hydraulic system to get up off the flat. Now, I usually use, I just got a bike pump. <laughs> I have an air compressor, but uh, for these, I normally just use a bike pump. I'll throw my bike pump on here. Unsurprisingly, these are currently at zero. Now, you wanna be between 40 to 50 pounds on the boost cylinders. I usually will do 50, candidly. And this is also something I check every time. So before I use them and I, and I, take, and I take these down off the wall, and before I lift a car, I will always check to see what the pressure in these cylinders are. So there, there's a good clean 50 pounds. And they say not to exceed 50, okay? So then I always, also always make sure to put the little cap back on here. Okay, now we're gonna test about actually bleeding the system after you've added your hydraulic fluid. Now, here's the one thing. If you use the recommended uh, their uh, thread, if, you, if you're not using pipe tape and you're actually using their thread sealant, you have to wait 24 hours before you can bleed the system because all of your hoses are not ready to hold pressure yet. So I will see you guys in 24 hours. Hey y'all, welcome back to tomorrow. <laughs> so it's about 24 hours later, I've given my hoses enough time to make sure that uh, that thread sealant has actually dried and I'm good to go. Now, so what I've done is now we need to bleed uh, the lines themselves. So as you can see, I have two tall blocks stacked with a small block on top of that. So it's three blocks total, two big ones small, on each side to get them up off the ground, which is going to tip the cylinder up to a little bit uh, different position than it is when it's down flat. Now. QuickJack has actually improved this process. I remember the guide where it used to say, you know, have the rails up and over your shoulder and be bleeding with it, kind of holding it up in the air. Well, they figured out you don't need to do that anymore, which is really nice. So you're gonna to wanna to connect your hoses. So this is gonna be the first fitment of all, all of your hoses. Whenever you're working with your pump, connect the bottom one first and then the top one. You can do them in the other way around, but it just makes it harder. So always make sure to connect the bottom one first. Now, I've topped off my reservoir tank as we discussed earlier, um, and that level is gonna change, but never, ever, ever add, like for example, raise your rails. If I raise the rails right now and I check, this reservoir is gonna be low. And if I added fluid then, it's gonna to be too much fluid and it's gonna blow out the top. Not that I've ever done that. <laughs> so, what you're gonna to wanna to do Let's go ahead and get some rags. Go ahead and just kind of pre-place them under the bleed screw right here, which is on top of the cylinder. And you're gonna take an Allen wrench that I've got here off this keyed tool. You're gonna to find an Allen wrench that fits. You're gonna fit it in right here. And you're gonna raise and lower the rails three times. Now, don't, don't raise them past your first safety stop. And if you ha haven't had a set of quick jacks before, you don't know what that is. That's this bar right here. 
So you're gonna wanna raise them about eight inches, but make sure you don't go past that first safety stop, okay? Because they might be hard to get back down. You're gonna raise and lower them three times, and then we're going to bleed. So let me get that started. I'm gonna raise and lower them three times. Also keep in mind, this is the first time they've ever had fluid in them, so they're, they're probably gonna go up a little unevenly, down a little unevenly. They will smooth out as we bleed this process, which is why we're doing it. But let's go ahead and get started on the very first raise here. So we're gonna get this going, and they've changed the controller too on this one, which is kind of, too, kind of cool. So here we go. So nothing happening yet because the fluid is still going in. It's gotta feed in through all the hoses, in through the cylinders, to get this all worked out. There we go. That's actually fairly smooth, all things considered. There we go. And that's about just short of the first safety stop. And then we're going back down. Now, I've got the down button depressed and you notice they're not going and they're gonna be really slow. They talk about not putting weight on the system yet. Check your manual for that just to make sure. But you're gonna go through this three separate times. All right, so go ahead and do this three times and I'm gonna show you how to bleed it. All right, so now that you've put the rails up and down three times, you wanna get as much air out of the cylinder as possible. So you wanna get your Allen wrench in here with a rag underneath because you will get some hydraulic fluid out and go ahead and loosen the nut. There you go, definitely getting some air out there. You could hear it. Now I'm getting all fluid. So now I'm gonna back off and stop. Now you can do both, you do one cylinder at a time, but you can do both cylinders as you work through this, which is what I recommend you do. Okay, so bleed it back out. Then what you're going to do is you're gonna raise it up. You're gonna raise the rails up a couple of inches and stop, bleed it again, raise it up a couple of inches, bleed it again. Now, and then when you put it back down, never, ever, ever, put the rails back down with the bleeder valve open because what you're gonna do is you're gonna be sucking air back in, which would be a bummer, right? So bleed both sides, do the incremental bleeds, uh, like I said, by raising it a couple of inches now, bleed it again, a couple of inches, bleed it again. If you have to, put it back down, start over again. You're gonna rinse and repeat this process until you get no more air at all from both sides. All right, so go ahead and get that done. All right, y'all, so all done. So I've bled, I've bled the system until I don't get any more air through it. Obviously, I've still got it up on the blocks. So just get, take them down carefully. But let's talk about really quickly one of the accessories you can buy, which are the quick jack hooks. Now, I really like these. They're an option, option you can get when you order this kit. I highly recommend them. And if you see from some of the other holes here, as the quick jacks I've owned have gotten longer, the hooks have moved up the wall. But I do suggest these. So keep that in mind. Uh, now, these are 91 inches off the ground, and I mean 91 inches to the top screw hole right there. So 91 inches to the ground, which actually makes them lean back a little bit. The quick jack will lean back and then hook um, up under those hooks. They've been very, very secure. The one other thing I wanna point out, and I keep getting comments <laughs> from subscribers. Hey, when are you gonna finish and paint your garage? Well, if I keep punching holes in my garage, I'm, that, that, that project keeps getting pushed back, as you can tell, right? But the other thing is you can also tell from my sheetrock right where the stud is, right? So I've, I've put these big, long, the, the screws that are provided are huge, and I've driven them back into the stud, so they're super secure, okay? So then they're gonna sit here, you'll see them in all of my projects moving forward. As you look back over my shoulder, you'll see my new quick jacks hanging up here on the wall. But all in all, pretty much all done. Now keep in mind, these are quick releases. So when you'll get really used to taking this system apart, it's a little hard to do with one hand and it may fight me a little bit, but what you're looking for, you can see the little ball and the little notch right there. You wanna line those two up and pull, there we go, not bad one-handed, pull towards the little bump and you, you will disconnect. Now, I always put the caps back on. Um, we've got a little bit of seepage here through the fitting, that's okay, get it off your hands. I always put the caps back on to make sure to maintain these fittings. I've had over, over time, one of these fittings fail. It wasn't a big deal because it was easy to replace, okay? But that was over, the, over about three years of, of really constant use, high level use. Same thing here at this end, you just normally start where we started at the bottom to the top when we put them on, I normally go top to the bottom, taking them off. And then you can coil your hoses up, hook them away. Now, the one other thing to notice, take a look at my reservoir. <laughs> It's actually dented in a little bit. So my suspicion is that my volume, my liquid volume is a little bit low. So the one very last thing I want to do 
So I'm going to go ahead and check uh, my hydraulic fluid in here. Now the system is completely down, so this is as full as it should be. So go ahead and add any hydraulic fluid that's gonna bring you back to about a half inch short of the top. Okay, and then you'll be good to go there. All right, pretty much that. You're all said and done. Go ahead and clean up, put, put your tools away. Good job. This is gonna be a really important tool that's gonna make a big difference to your car work over time. All right, as you can see, they've been put away, and I cannot wait to use these on my upcoming projects, and you're gonna see them use, um, use them on almost everything I do. You'll even find excuses of you to use them, and even like washing your car, taking your wheels off so you can clean your wheels entirely, clean your rotors, clean your calipers, all those things you need to do. They're really a fantastic tool. It is one of the most useful tools I, of everything I have, and I use them all the time, which is why now this is my third set of quick jacks. As my usage model and how I use them continue to change and, and adapt over time. Couple of things now really, really quickly. Always make sure to check the boost cylinders. Every time that I use them, I always, I always get out my bike pump and I check to make sure that they're at 50 pounds. Now the other thing is don't ever run them down flat with your car on the, on the rails themselves when your wheels are off, right? Because then it's gonna be at a complete drop level and you're gonna be trying to lift the entire car just off those boost cylinders, that's not going to work. So be very careful, make sure to read through the rest of the manual and some of their guidance on how to use it and you'll be fine and you're gonna find that this is one of the best tools you have. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Please make sure to click like and subscribe. It makes an incredible difference to my channel and I would truly appreciate it. Thank you to QuickJack for making such a fantastic product that you're gonna see in a lot of upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video.